So I made a video about a month ago titled Why the Kings Are Better Than You Think. Well, for this video, I kind of want to talk about the same thing that we talked about back then because um, I've been realizing that people think the Kings are just like a Cinderella story or they're comparing them to like old regular season teams. And I, I just don't see it. And I think it's backed up by a lot of lazy arguments to say like people just watching the game. They're watching like the stats and stuff instead of actually watching. It's a lot of lazy stuff that we will talk about. But this is why, again, the Kings are better than you think. What's good, you guys? We're back again with another video. And like I said, we will be talking about the Kings this video. Also, like I said from last video, please do not pay attention to my background. The next video you will get, which will be next week, because I am going on vacation tomorrow, will be a whole new background, a whole new color scheme, everything. Everything will be new. So don't mind that. But the Kings, I have to talk about the Kings because I'm getting annoyed. And I'm just going to start off with the main point. I'm getting annoyed with other teams, fan bases, and like the rumors that we're getting. Like, let's just be blunt. The Lakers, a rumor came out that said they are hoping to get that seven seed so they can face the Kings. Shit like that makes me mad. I've also seen Warriors fans say they want that seven seed. I've also seen Dallas Mavericks fans say they want that seven seed or that third seed so they can play the Kings. I mean, that six seed so they can play the Kings. And shit like that makes me mad because it makes no sense. One is highly delusional because teams like the Mavericks, teams like the Lakers, teams like the Warriors are in that playing race for a fucking reason. It's not like, of course they dealt with injuries, but most of the time they've had their guys. We went through a large stretch of times when AD and LeBron was still on the court at the same time. They were still trash. Luka... That team's just trash. I'm not even going to put that on Luka. That team's just trash. Um, the Warriors, yes, we have time to step Curry was out. But you guys are 7-27 in world games. Like, that's that's a reason why you guys suck and you're down low. But we're looking at the Kings. I like to target the Kings because they're new and fresh, and I get it. But this is not no fucking Cinderella story. This is a legit scary team. And the way the Nuggets are looking, I understand it's a stretch, and I don't want to... Um, like overblow it or just have recency bias but I was coming into like a couple weeks ago thinking like the only team that the Sacramento Kings wouldn't like they wouldn't stack up against at all is the Nuggets this is all before KD and everything but was the Nuggets I just felt like the Nuggets was a bad matchup but watching the Nuggets as of late not just because they're losing just the stuff I'm seeing with their defense and then I'm watching the Kings that would be a tough matchup for the, for the Nuggets because I don't think people realize yes, this is a really good offense, but no, this is an all-time offense. It's an all-time offense. All-time. Of course, the game gets better. Um, the games get revolutionized. You're going to have all-time offense every year, but it just seems different because this is the same offense we see, we see from the Warriors, and the Warriors, to a lot of people, have the best offense of all time. Just a lot of motion, a lot of movement. Um, frequent ball movement, and then you just have hella three point shooting. And then, but this team has something that the Warriors never really had they have a paint bruiser, they have somebody where the three point shots are not hitting that can attack the rim. They have two of those guys. I'm not saying that Steph couldn't do that, I'm not saying KD couldn't do that, but you got a guy like De'Aaron Fox who, like, you really can't stop him one on one. You can't. I've seen, I've seen him drop 20 and a quarter yesterday on Drew Holiday. We all know Drew Holiday is the best perimeter defender by all. He just could not fuck with De'Aaron. And this this is something we will talk about De'Aaron lately. But, like, his game is going to transfer. Because it's not... It's, his game is not a regular season game. Because when the game slows down, which is the fourth quarter, which we will also talk about what happens when the team... What happens in the fourth quarter when the game slows down, the team is also really good. It's not just De'Aaron. But when the game slows down and De'Aaron's in the fourth quarter... All mid range. When you need to shoot in the in the playoffs, all mid range. That's why teams win. You got anomalies like the Warriors. Like I said, they're the major anomalies. But you need to have a mid range shot in the playoffs. That's why other guys that are just slashers they struggle, especially against lineups with big wings. Like I'm not picking on him, John Morant. He struggled against the Timberwolves because he just the size is too much. And if you're doing a pick and roll, he's going to go to the rim. That's all he can do. But De'Aaron Fox, he's able to set up in the mid-range. But we'll talk about that later. As many ways I can break down this team. Um, I also want to talk about their shooting, just to start off. They have some 
elite, and I think I underestimated it coming into the season. And I think it's mostly because I really never looked at Kevin Herter as a shooter because he really wasn't getting these shots in, in the Hawks. He just, it was just Trey Young. And you get Kevin Herter to shoot the wide open ones, but like, no, they're running frequent plays for Kevin Herter. He's running around screens, screen, screens. I've been doing that a lot lately. He's running around screens with Demonis Avonis. Their two man game is le legit. It's hard to stop. It's hard to stop. That's one of the best pick and rolls, one of the best two man games we have in this league. And that's why Kevin Herter is doing so good. Because all the shots are just open because you have one of the best screen setters in the league. So a lot of the shots are going to be open. Yes, he went through that whole stretch where he was shooting like 28% from the three, but that was an anomaly. Because that was like a 15 game stretch. But compare that to the 60, or I'm going to say the 50 other games that he played, he's one of the best shooters in the league. Malik Monk, when they play him a lot, because that's one thing I question with Mike Brown, but I understand it because Malik Monk has his times where he's like, he's just, you can't have him on the floor because the defense is so bad. But when he's hitting, he's hitting. He's one of the best six men in the league by far. And he showed me something I never knew he had. He was on my team last year. The dude is a good playmaker. I wouldn't say like, of course, it's in a lesser role, so it's going to look better. But as far as bench pieces of bench point guards, even though he's not a point guard, though, he can play me. And I know it helps to have Sabonis to play off the pick and roll with Sabonis. But, like, duh, bro, he can play me. Him in that pick and roll, the pocket pass is Sabonis. He's allowed to make cross court skip passes to the corner. Like, he's doing all that stuff that he really never had the freedom to do. He played with Kemba Walker, played with Melo last year, LeBron, AD. He didn't really have the ball in his hands a lot unless it's to spot up. But no, Mike Brown has given him the six-man role. They have other guys. Keegan Murray. I'm, I'm going to clap it up again. Thank you to the Kings for not taking the bait in Jaden Ivey, a nigga that didn't even want to work out for y'all. Thank you finally for not taking that bait. And stop going for potential because it doesn't work. You need to win now. Keegan Murray. Dude, that fits perfectly for what you have. He's also running two-man line. I mean, two-man screens with Demonis Sabonis, and that's also one of the best two men in the league and I think he's done stuff to make his game better throughout the season he's one of those other rookies that I, I wouldn't say he hit a rookie wall he's always been shooting the elite like 44% from the three as a rookie top in the league from three as a rookie he, he's been doing this all year but then he's made improvements with his rebounding I don't think he's as bad of a defender as people think he is I think I would love him to guard threes not fours because he's just too small and that's what I hope they get in the draft or this offseason, like a Jeremy Grant type guy. But I think you just put him at the three, and he's became a decent defender. You got guys like Terrence Davis, who I've seen him win multiple games for this team. Just come out of nowhere and just hit multiple threes. You got Harrison Barnes to shoot 36% from three. You got Trey Lyles. I don't understand why he bounces from team to team to team because he's just a person that every championship team needs. We need you to shoot, we need you to get rebounds, we need you to be versatile. He's all of those things. Why does he keep bouncing from team to team? I don't know. <laughs> I don't I watch Trey Trey Laws every time and I just I don't understand. Timothy Metu, one of the unsung heroes from this team. And he's one of those ones that's like the only defender on the team. And it's even his defense is not all that, but he can rim protect. He can rim run. Um his shot, he even they allow him to shoot it sometimes, but you won't rely on that. Um Davion Mitchell, I take back, take back all I said from the beginning of the season. You was probably going through your own bad stretch because he's been really good as of late, especially when De'Aaron Fox was out. He stepped it up, and that's what he always does. And his defense, like I say, he's by far, shout out to De'Aaron. De'Aaron in the fourth quarter is close, but he's not always in the fourth quarter. But anything else, Davion is by far the best defender on this team, and they're going to need him because he can guard. Like, it's crazy. He's 5'11" guarding Kawhi and it was like it's not even a mismatch and that's an all-time great but it's a long time in this video so I want to just break it down a thing that people are also sleeping on when they talk about oh they don't have no experience but they have Mike Brown and it's like yo, that, that might sound little to y'all but that shit not this nigga has literally changed the whole franchise this is not a pushover team I'm, I'm sorry I, I just cut myself off but this is not a pushover team and I don't understand why y'all see that they, Mike Brown has changed this whole franchise around. This is an all-time offense we're watching. We've never seen Sabonis be used like this. Like he's really, he really implemented the Warriors' offense into this team, and it's worked perfectly. 
Um, yeah, Mike Brown, he's gonna he's gonna find his ways. He's gonna find his ways. He's already top five coach, and he's not like a like we're we're getting we're crying here too quick to saying that no, like we did for fucking Willie Green. He sucks, but Mike Brown legit, legit. Like no, this is when we look at it, it's not that much of a talented team. Like other teams is obviously talented under them, but they just have an elite coach. But I focus on shooting this whole time. You might say when when when. God damn. You, you might say, what happens when the shooting doesn't hit? And a lot of people like to point out the 2021 Jazz. I'm sorry, y'all seeing it right now. When the shooting doesn't hit, what the fuck is Donovan Mitchell doing? He's not taking it to the ground. He rarely does that. Even though he's so unstoppable when, when he goes, when, when he want to go. Jesus Christ, I got to slow down. He's so unstoppable when he wants to go to the rim. But he just doesn't do it. But what does this team have that they don't have? Two elite paint guys. One of the guys, one of the guys, is damn near leading the league in pain points, like a fucking guard. And you have Demond Sabonis, who, shit. When we looking at the West, other than AD, who's stopping him? J- Jaron Jackson, put him on, put him on Sabonis if he wants it. That's four fouls in that first half, and then he's like last year, not playing in the first series. Jokic, he bullies Jokic. D- what D- Zubak? Zubak has trouble with guys that like to play above the free throw line with centers. No. Looney, I guess. I, Looney's actually really good. I love Looney. But, like I said, it's nobody to really stop him. And then the other teams that was like so live and die by the three, they didn't have nobody that goes to the paint. They didn't have nobody to dominate in the paint. You have Sabonis. Who, it, to be honest, I love De'Aaron. He's the offense. He just sets up the screens. He makes people get open. And he's just a bully, offensive rebounds, paint beat. And when you look at him, he's not the ockiest guy, but the motherfucker is an ox. It's it's crazy watching him. And then De'Aaron. The game is it's going to transfer. It's going to transfer. Um, like Mike Brown always says, he just got to find a way to get into De'Aaron's head that you can do this for four quarters. Because in that fourth quarter, I'm not taking nobody else. I'm taking De'Aaron Fox, and I'm just going to roll with the punches. That's just what he's shown us this year. I would like tech games because I'm, I'm not one of these liars that I, like I watch every game. But I would tech games and I'm like, yo, Darren, you only got like 12 points. Nigga, come on. Be for real. You're, you're the guy. And then I come back, he has 32. And this is not like no one time, two time, three No, this is whole fucking season. He lets the other guys do their things. And in the fourth quarter, just give him the ball. Please get the fuck out the way. And it works every time. It does, and th- that's just how good he is, dog. And even for me, a De'Aaron guy, I just, I didn't see this. I seen the team being better, but him taking the All NBA lead, cause which I do think he's All NBA. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. And when we talk about All NBA guys, why are y'all so quick to put? Uh, I don't even know if I want to say that. I do want to say this. Why are y'all so quick to put Dan? Of course, numbers cool. Motherfucker, the Kings are the fucking two seed. I don't give a fuck. This nigga is second team. He's second team because I think Steph Curry still gonna get that first team. He's over Dane, bro. He's over Jai. He's over Shea. He's over Trey. He's over Bronson. There he is. He's, he's over everybody. He's been the third best guard this year. I'm sorry. De'Aaron is just that guy in the fourth quarter. He becomes a completely different player on both sides. And last point, the defense. That lazy ass argument because when we're looking at this team, they are in their top five in close games. They win most of them fucking close games, of course, because the Aaron Fox, but they are also top five in defense in clutch in clutch defense. They're top five in that. And I understand the defense is still terrible. But if I'm able to score 130 and I can hold you guys from scoring 131. Fuck my defense being that good. Because at the end of the day, the defense is about, like, who scores most? Of course. Of course. I, I, I get it. <laughs> the defense is about that. But if I can score 131 and you score 130, who gives a fuck if I got the 25 frame defense? And who in the West has the defense to stop them? It's not the Grizzlies because that's the best defense in, in, the, in the West. No, it's not. They don't have the perimeter defense. Um, I, I don't trust them in the paint against the bonus in the seven game series. I think they take Steven Adams out that series. No, it's not them. Now we look at another another team, the the Nuggets. Do they? No, 
not at fuck, and I, that's why it would be a hard series for the Nuggets because Jokic still has to play drop against that team. And I don't even want to talk about that. I can make a, a Jokic video if I want. The Warriors, they have a terrible defense this year. The Lakers, eh. I still don't trust our perimeter defense. No, I don't. Um, Clippers, they have a terrible defense. So why is it crazy for me to say this team with the first offense in the league and the 25th best defense, best defense in the league can make the Western Conference Finals? If you bring up defense, I'm going to ask you, who can stop them? And I'm going to ask you, what top defense is... Well, that's the same question. I'm going to ask you, what top defense in the West? It's, it's not. It's not really. Not. So, that's it for this video. Let me know how you like this video. I, like I said, the Kings are not a Cinderella story. People shouldn't be hunting to face the fucking Kings. No, they will blow your ass out the water. Lakers fans, we want the sixth seed. We want the fucking Grizzlies. That's what I want. That's an easy series. This series, they would fuck us. Whoa. They would fuck us up, though. <laughs> so, that's it for this video, man. Like I said, I will see you guys in a week, hopefully. I stick to what I'm saying to pay my room. I'm a lazy person. But I'll see y'all in a week.